You know, I go out every weekend looking forward to collecting vintage games, toys, and books. And I go to a lot of different places, a lot of out of town places, different estate sales, different antique shops or garage sales or things like that. And I actually find that part really fun. But what do I do if there's really nothing good going on one particular weekend? All week long, I try to make content, post things to my online stores of the things that I have collected, trying to find ways to uh, get people to notice what I'm selling, to view the videos that I make, to go to the website that I have. I spend all week doing that. So when it comes time to actually do the fun part, it sucks when there's really nothing going on that weekend. But here's the thing, on top of looking for those things, I like the adventure. I like the mystery of walking into a stranger's house, of seeing where is this place? Where, what's the place like? What kind of interesting actual structure does the house have? I, it, rarely do I go to a house where I'm like, ah, that's just a house. I've, I've always walked in there and there's something strange. And today, while there was nothing really going on anywhere within like a 50 mile radius, I looked at all the different listings on estatesales.net and estatesales.org, and all of them were kind of like, eh, but I still wanted to go do something. So we decided just to drive to two of them that were kind of on opposite sides of town. We're at an estate sale that's by a lake. And I don't know which lake because we have a couple of lakes by us, I suppose, but it's like 45 minutes away. The first one took us on a little route that was a nice drive. It, w it went, I love it when my maps finally go, you know what, instead of just driving on the highway, we're gonna take you on some country roads and take you around places you've never been in like small two lane highways that are just fields on both sides. So we get to the place and it's like right on the edge of this small lake. It's like a little cabin house. And inside, like you can see this back porch, like it's beautiful. It's right on the water, really cool. And the house is kind of laid out really interesting. But the thing is, is walking around, literally there was nothing in there I wanted. It was one of those houses where it looks cool the stuff is kind of neat i'm looking around going that's interesting but the people that go to my shop aren't looking for these things so i didn't pick them up so but there happened to be another one on the exact opposite side of town which we're going to check that out now and to tell you the truth i'm not sure this one's going to be any good either and the second one was kind of like it looked like maybe some of the pictures had some stuff but i wasn't too hopeful and going inside this is one where it was structured a little strange and it had a gazebo, which to me personally, gazebos are kind of like, we have a porch, but what if our porch was over there? That's, that's just me, I don't know, I don't, I don't get gazebos. And uh, the house was very carpeted, and it was one of those houses where it was longer, but technically had three stories, so it was longer because of the not really three stories, and that meaning you had your first floor, and then there was a little, maybe four steps down, that was kind of a sub-basement. And then on the first floor to the right, there was a few more steps to a level that was just a little bit higher than the, than the second floor. And if you go to the left of that, there's like three more steps, and that's also sort of a third floor, because it's just a little bit, but none of them are above each other. They're all kind of next to each other and just a little elevated. There was a whole table full of stuff, that was right up our alley, but they were kind of priced as if they were being sold online. So it wasn't something where I was gonna buy them and go, this is exactly what it's worth. So that wasn't really worth it for me and I didn't buy those. If you look around enough, in the little sections, just in the middle of nowhere, there'll be something where it's like, hey, look at this. Uh, one of the things I found was just randomly on a table, just two 1970s Flintstones plates. I. I had never seen those before, and so I was just, they reminded me of the, like the McDonald's plates or the Mickey Mouse plates that I'd seen when I was growing up. So I found those, and then down in the basement, oh, here's something, the basement. It was a weird basement. Uh, first of all, that's where I ended up finding some toys that I bought. There were a few games there, ones that I've had before um, that I know people like, but when you came down the stairs to get to the basement, if you turn to the right, there was this weird like, I want to say it was like a, a little cubby hole, a little tunnel, but it was just, it was because of those half raised floors. 
even the basement had the effect of the half floor above it. So there was this lowered, like you had to duck to go in sort of section of the basement. And it made it look like it was this weird little uh, Chronicles of Narnia tunnel that you had to crawl through and maybe something will be on the other side. So that was interesting. Sometimes just like those plates that I found, I'll, there'll be a little thing and I'm not even really aware what it is, but I'm looking at it going, this is something. And then a few months later, I'll see some retro like TV commercial on YouTube and it'll be like, oh, that's this. And suddenly I'll be like, that's actually worth something more. And all it was, was it was just a random thing I got for a dollar that I picked up because there was nothing else going on. So showing this stuff is gonna be pretty quick today. Cause like I said, it's just a few things. This is the big boggle from 1979. It sounded like when I said the big boggle, it's like I'm going like, hi, let me introduce myself. I'm the big boggle. And it really is just that it's bigger. It's got a bigger square, bigger cubes. I think it's so you can't uh, use them with the other one. So I don't know. I don't understand. Does it have more words? I don't know why I'm trying to figure this out now. Another one of the games was Password from 1986. I've gotten many of these Password games and I swear they've never had the same cover, but it's always the same content inside. And it's one of those games where it has the sort of red masking and the answers are underneath. So you have to have these special password packets that has the little red cellophane. So you can't see the red and all you can see are the blue words that are written underneath in secret, but you can't make them out when you're trying to view them with the naked eye. This one is interesting because I've never seen it before, which is why we picked it up. So it's called Option and it's from 1982. And it kind of just looks like a crossword puzzle or maybe like a, another one of those Scrabble ripoffs. Who knows? I don't. I'll find out soon. And it looks like the game pieces are triangular. Pretty sneaky, sis. Triangular. Oh, I see. They are triangular. They go into these things with two of the sides poking in and the third side poking out with the word you want to use. I don't know. I've never seen this one before. Of course, I wasn't really huge on word games when I was growing up. And this is the Milborn game I was talking about. Milborns? Mil it's a French game. And I believe it's automobile themed. To tell you the truth, I don't really find out much about this game when I get it because pretty much soon after I get it, somebody buys it. I Maybe they don't make it anymore or something, but specifically this version of the game, this one right here with this cover, always just people really like it and they want it right away. So I'll post it and somebody will buy it right away. So here's the Flintstones plates that I was talking about. And they're kind of nifty. I think this artwork on it is super cool. I love it when they do the painted versions of it. Not like the, here's a clip from the cartoon version. They do the, somebody, somebody actually took the time to make this and them above the ground, they're not even driving with their feet. But look at that, Fred and Barney and Wilma, I don't know what Wilma's looking at. Maybe she's looking at how fast the child ate their food from their plate so they could see the picture. I'm assuming that was what they were trying to go for when they made these plates. But these are really nifty and they're heavy duty too. You can see the Ernie candle right here. Again, I've mentioned this in previous videos, but candles that are people that have the wick on the top of their head are just disturbing to me because when you burn them, it's just gonna be, they're slowly melting away as their head deteriorates. I mean, right? And in another, like, they just happen to be there type of thing, two Banana Splits albums. So, you know, the Banana Splits from the 1960s kids cartoon show. Sha la la, la 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 la. This is Kellogg's Presents. So they're also Kellogg's produced albums of Hanna-Barbera's banana splits, which isn't that surprising because pretty much all of the Hanna-Barbera cartoons in the 1960s were sponsored by Kellogg's. I mean, Kellogg's had a whole thing with Huckleberry Hound and Yogi Bear and they had cereal tie-ins and like toy giveaways. And so that doesn't surprise me that Kellogg's also went into the banana splits type stuff. But sometimes it's just fun to go out there because all week long I'm posting stuff to the store and I like to get out there and have the experience that I started doing this for in the first place. 